Still on the death of Madam Abba Kiari, former President Goodluck Jonathan and former Vice President Atiku Abakara and Senate President Ahmed Lawan have expressed shock on the passage of the Chief of Staff to the President Abba Kiari. In a separate tweet on Saturday morning, the three politicians paid tributes to the departed Chief of Staff. Kiari died on Friday at the age of 81 and the President's spokespersons, Garbashehu and Femi Adishino, said the deceased died of COVID-19. And joining us live in the studio is Alibaba Akpobome to have a conversation around this. Good to have you here. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I was uh, actually at work and mm -hmm. uh, was pulled out of uh, because uh, all essential services are on right now uh, and every assistance that the government needs uh, should be given. Mm -hmm. As road safety officers, we are on the road. As uh, celebrities, we also try to help as much as we can. Uh, to spread the word, spread the message, and let people know that you have to wear protective gears, right. which is one of the things that we didn't see a lot of people wearing around at the funeral. At the funeral. We'll, we'll come, we'll okay. come no, to No, 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 but, but the thing is uh, okay. he, he, he holds the office of the chief of staff, so first we respect that, mm -hmm. so we've lost the chief of staff. The other thing is that uh, he is um, an elder statesman, right. and so that also has to be considered. The third part is he's someone who has the president's ears mm -hmm. all right um and uh, the last is that in this present situation he is a covid 19 victim mm. and so all of that have to be taken into consideration and looking at this like uh, you can see when someone like this dies it's not partisan so you have jonathan sending messages right. atiku sending messages even the fiercest of all oppositions will send messages because at this point of at uh, this point in time uh, a citizen has been lost because of uh, a pandemic that has come upon us without our planning for it. Mm -hmm. It's different from being a politician. All right. So uh, let's go straight into the matter. Yeah. Um, as soon as news broke out, like you said, we got reactions from different people. You know, Nigerians, there are mixed uh, reactions and mixed feelings around yeah. his death. Um, but he was seen, and many people said that he's a man that didn't say much, but he did so much. How do you react? You know, what are your thoughts? Uh, one, one is that he, like I mentioned, that uh, we're dealing with different parts of the man here. The elder statesman, his office as uh, chief of staff and uh, not too long ago he was put nearly like the deputy vice president mm -hmm. when he got the role of being the intermediary between every other person that is coming to him um, we must say one thing that the president may not be one who is gifted in letters we know that he's not gifted in letters so some things that might have been sent to him he might have not treated them well. And so he decided, let this guy vet them first before they get to me. And so he's become a very, like Daily Momodu said, a de facto deputy president. And uh, in, in that instance, uh, his uh, role in the affairs of Nigerian government mm. was vital. Now, let's talk about um, secrecy. Um, at a time when he was tested positive, we heard he was tested positive and then he was moved. There were speculations about being moved to Lagos and of course, and then that's all that we knew up until yesterday. Do you think our government is transparent enough to let us know as citizens what is going on and especially crucial matters uh, like this? I think, I think there's a lot going on in Nigeria. The undercurrents are strong and it's the ebb is just the currents are carrying us to places that we, we do not do not uh, expect to go. Uh, for the kind of person that Abba Kairi is, it's it's a signpost to what the government is doing. What is government doing? Uh, it's another question that if it were not for the ban mm -hmm. across the country, someone like him would have been flown out. Right. You understand? So it means that there's preventive treatment. For instance, with this that is going on, I I strongly believe that. If Abba Kiari had been taken to the COVID center, he would have gotten a better treatment. Why did you think so? Because the places that they take people like that to, you need the expertise. What has been done is that all state governments have pooled resources to those centers. All the best hands have been taken to those centers. And so what you then have in private centers would then require not so much attention mm. because the, the, these people, you, you can see the, the results that we're getting. There are a lot of people who are being released uh, and being cleared from this uh, COVID-19. And I believe that for someone like him, the government should have been transparent. 
like you, you said, uh, and, and told us every day today. We knew where Boris Johnson was. That's right. We knew it, there, was, there, were, there were weekly updates on what was going on. If this guy had been Even given when he a, went to, into the ICU. Exactly. If this man had been made a de facto deputy vice president, then it becomes important for us to know everything that is happening. The secrecy around it was not around, which is what has led to uh, conspiracy theory that mm -hmm. he had been dead like a week ago. Uh, you can't blame anybody for having such kind of thoughts because uh, you, you fed it. Mm -hmm. All right, let's also look at the fact that um, many have said, obviously, um, COVID-19 is a respecter of no person sure. at all. Sure. Is this, are there lessons for us to learn as a nation that, well, just maybe we are not taking this uh, pandemic as serious as we should? The lessons are there. One, Italy did not take it serious and the numbers grew astronomically. Uh, the United States didn't take it serious. In fact, the president at first said that it was a hoax. Mm. And we, we saw what the consequences were. There were countries that did not even think that Spain, did not think that COVID were, and it, it, it begs the question, like there was a state governor who said, because the uh, people were mentioned in the Bible, it will not come to them. There were state governors who were in denial. Um, Abia, uh, not Abia, uh, Akwaibom mm -hmm. denied when they said they found some five people who said that cannot be. Under. And when you continue to do that, it, it, it leads to more problems. Or like uh, imams and pastors who are supposed to spread the word as fast as possible because they, they interact and uh, integrate with a lot more people in their congregation. Uh, the imams do that Fridays, mm -hmm. uh, the pastors do that on Sundays, Wednesdays, and sometimes in, in other meetings. These are the point, contact points and platforms that we should have used to push that message. What we have done is that we had let this thing creep in on us. Mm -hmm. We should have been prepared for it. And when I say prepared for it, I'm even talking about past administrations. You can't be building a CBN headquarters that is that massive. You don't have a, a commensurate hospital. You are even planning to renovate your National, National Assembly. Assembly, and you renovated the clinic in the, uh, in the villa mm -hmm. with so much money that we have built another hospital somewhere. So we have not taken our health sector seriously. We also then had a minister of labor that said, we actually have too much doctors. Doctors. And we do not, so things the like this. The minister himself being a trained doctor. Uh, exactly. So these are, these are indicators to the fact that when things like this then happen, it then looks like when the Ten grooms, uh, ten uh, maids were waiting to see the groom, mm. and when the pandemic came, they went with extra oil, and then that was when some other people were going to look for oil, just like we're doing now. We're beginning to build state uh, uh, makeshift hospitals at stadiums, when we should have already had things like that. Well, look at Aquaibom, for instance. They have a massive stadium. Mm -hmm. They don't have a hospital that is as big as that, which would have been serving them daily. A hospital would have served them much better than the stadium. But it's about planning. Mm -hmm. Now let's still come back to um, Abakiari, who has just passed on and also been buried. His death means that there is a political vacancy. There's a vacuum already created. We know how crucial his role was, even to Mr. President. Yeah. What should we expect in the coming days? There's going to be some political maneuvering. Uh, political maneuvering because first they will think, uh, first thing that you have to know is that the, the president that we have communicates a lot much better in Hausa. Mm. And the president that we have uh, is not a man good and versed in words, in English words. And so his uh, communication skills uh, are, are in question. So it means that whoever he needs to have as a chief of staff is someone who he can break a thought, an idea to, in basic Hausa. And so, uh, uh, as much as uh, someone who then understands his, uh, uh, his feelings in mm -hmm. English and who would also then try to make sure that he understands anything that is brought to his notice. Uh, so that's the first thing that you do. Then you then begin to look at loyalty. One of the reasons he chose Abakari was his loyalty. Um, and the fact that Abakari was very smart. Mm -hmm. So he's going to also look for somebody who is smart because uh, when you choose a PA or an assistant that does not have what you do not have, then both of you are lacking in all, all standards. So, so that is going to be in question. Uh, again, there would also be one uh, 
issue that will be considered now. It will be, it will be a matter of 2023 elections mm. that will be involved in this. Thing. That would be a very major point that would, they will consider in choosing who will be the next chief of staff. All right. Uh, one more question is, I see the way you're dressed, you know, already. We're talking about safety. We're talking about social distancing. We're yes, talking yes. about the measures to be put in place to curb uh, the spread of COVID-19. I'm not sure whether you had a chance to watch the funeral of uh, Abakiari, which just happened. Are you concerned? Uh, are you concerned that, um, yes, it's now displaced? Are you concerned at the number of persons that we have? There is no uh, social distancing observed. What is going on? Is it that we don't understand the, the seriousness of it? Even the NCDC tweeted that, and to say because of the protocols that is supposed to be observed for cases of COVID-19, it's going to be a private funeral. But we saw people who were cramped there. What is going on? It, one, one thing is that uh, we have so many educated illiterates, mm. period. We have a lot of educated illiterates. And then there's a game of numbers that a lot of people play in Nigeria. You feel like if so many people are dancing to one tune, then there's no reason why to. And we also do this uh, notice me. You know, you want to be, you play to the gallery just to make somebody believe that uh, you're very concerned about this person. You, and, and so there are people who did not attend their husband's burials because of things like this. Um, so social distancing has been breached. Uh, the other thing is that uh, there, were, there were no personal, protect, uh, personal protecting uh, equipment, okay. um, protection equipment. Uh, so in that point, when prayers are said, as close as we are here and we're talking, if I do not wear this and you're talking and I'm talking, we will be throwing saliva mm -hmm. in the air. And in that kind of sun, there's no reason that they would not have done that. Mm -hmm. With the sweat and the people, and there were some people who were not even wearing hand gloves. That's right. There were some people who did not have the, this mouth protection uh, equipment. You, you have people who also were talking over the shoulders of other people, they were arm to arm, they were shoulders to shoulder. It means that that had failed. What would you expect when some people like this were going for Jumat? Mm. So I expect that I expect that there will be there will be some consequences with this. And NCDC has said that this is not allowed and this should not have happened. All right. Thank you so very much for your time and for sharing your thoughts, Alibaba. Thanks for having me.